So before I forget, uh, we have a quiz today at 8.40. So even if I don't stop, please make sure you log into Quanta at 8.40. The quiz will run for 10 minutes from 8.40 to 8.50. Right. So let's get started with today's tutorial. I hope I'm audible. Yes. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Good. All right. Um, so let's start with the first question. So consider the circuit topology given below using a 5 volt supply with an NMOS transistor for which the VT is 0.8 volts. KN. So KN here means the size is also given. Remember KN prime is mu NC ox. So KN basically means mu NC ox times W by L. Is given to be 8 milliamp per volt squared and lambda is given to be to 0. Provide a design that biases the transistor at ID is equal to 1 milliamp with a VDS large enough to allow saturation operation for a 2 volt negative voltage swing at the drain. So at this volt, at this node, I should have up to a minus 2 volt negative swing, which can happen because of the AC voltage. Use 22 mega ohms as the largest resistor in the feedback network. So the feedback network is nothing but RG and RG1 and 2. What are the values of RD, RG1 and RG2? And specify the numbers to two digits. So here we don't have to do any small signal analysis. Here is also just a question of biasing. So where would you begin? How do you go about solving the question? So we have a 5 volt, uh, so like VDD. Yeah, so and VDD is 5 volts. And we have 2 voltage swing. So a minimum VD can be up to 3 volt. No, no, no. Think about it. Also, you also want the transistor to send a 1 milliamp signal, right? Yeah, 1 milliamp bias condition, right? So VDS will be VDD minus uh, ID, RD, right? VDS is ID. That's fine. So that will have the swing, right? Not really. What does the swing mean? The flux, the wave. Fluctuation, over right? So if I, if I put, uh, um, if, so what I'm trying to say is, this voltage, suppose I connect this as a common source amplifier where I give a V in at this point, right? My concern is that when I get a two, I should, I can tolerate up to a two volt swing on this drain. That is, when this drain voltage goes from the bias point to minus two volts below the bias point, also M1 should be in saturation. Is already following what the question means? The question means that, where is my pointer? Question means that this node D can swing minus two volts from the bias. So remember, the, you're biased the circuit at some bias voltage, right? So there will be a bias voltage which will be set up at this point, a steady state voltage. Now, what I'm telling you is that circuit should be in, designed in such a way that this voltage can have a minus two voltage volt swing, and still the transistor has to remain in saturation. Right? Because I don't want it to move away from a linear amplifier. Is already following the question? So for example, what I'm trying to say is that basically there will be a swing at this point and this is minus 2 volts or 2 volts. So even when it is at this point, I want to ensure that M1 remains in saturation. So where would you begin? So I think using ID, you can find uh, uh, VGS. Good. So do that. So that's the right step, right? So first thing you want. So what all do you need? You need to basically calculate RD, RG1, 
and RG2, right? So you know that RG2 can be calculated if I know what is the VGS needed, right? Because VGS is nothing going to, is going to be nothing but the voltage that is developed across RG2, right? So start there. So what do we know? So for, let's first find the overdrive of M1, right? So we know that M1 is in saturation, right? And lambda is equal to zero. Therefore, ID can be written as half KN V overdrive the whole squared, right? Or in other words, my V overdrive is nothing but square root of two ID by KN, right? which works out to square root of 2 into 1 milliamp divided by 8 milliamp per volt squared. Right? So milli milli cancels. This is 2 by 8, 1 by 4. So VOV is 0.5 volts. Right? So which means that if I need to support a 1 milliamp saturation current through M1, I need to ensure that my overdrive is half a volt. Right? So if my overdrive is half a volt, what is VGS equal to? 1.3 volts, right? So this basically means that this node has to be at 1.3 volts, right? Now, let's talk about, so if I need to find RG and RG2, right? If I know what the voltage at this point needs to be at the drain, then I can calculate RG1, RG2, right? Now, if VOV is half a volt, right? So for the transistor to remain in saturation, what is the minimum value of VD that should be for the transistor to be in saturation? If the transistor is biased in such a condition such that the overdrive voltage is half a volt, what should the minimum value of VDS be so that the transistor remains in saturation? So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, right? 0 0.5. So I have to follow that. Now what I'm telling you is that I have a minus two volt swing at the drain node. So even when I have a minus two volt swing at the drain, I should still ensure that I do not violate this condition. So what should? So what is the minimum value of VD I can choose? 2.5 volts, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to design the circuit, right? Such that this is 2.5 volts, right? So this is 5 volts. And now I know 2.5 and 1.3, right? So now I know the voltages that I need to eventually design in the circuit for, right? Now if I know ID, now the question is if I need to find out RG1 and RG2. So I've set up all the voltages. I know the current flowing through M1 is 1 milliamp, right? Now, can I calculate the rest? I can calculate the rest if I know what the current flowing through this branch is. But what am I given? I am given that use 22 mega ohms as the largest resistor in the circuit, right? So what I can do is I can pick either one of these two resistors is 22 mega ohms. Because see, this is the gate circuit, right? Now the current going in here is going to be zero, right? Because that's the gate node. So whatever is the current flowing through this circuit is basically going to be just used for biasing. So I want to ensure that the RG1 and RG2 are large resistors, right? So I will not use a 22 mega ohm resistor at RD because if I, if I flow one milliamp here, basically this will end up causing a 22 volt 20,000 volt here, which we cannot support, right? We cannot support an RD of 22 mega ohms because a 1 milliamp current is flowing. So the current flowing through RD has to be something greater than 1 milliamp. So the only way we can use the 22 mega ohm resistor is either in the gate circuit, so RG1, RG2. So I can make the following choice. I can make RG2 as 22 mega ohm, right? So if RG2 is set up to be 22 mega ohm, then knowing 2.5 volts and 1.3 volts, I can calculate what RG1 is. Right? So, but uh, don't we have RG2 is greater than RG1 because there's a bigger drop? 
right also yeah in that case we said rg1 sorry you're right so 1.3 and 1 2.5 right so the voltage drop across rg1 is what 1.2 volts so you will so smaller sir so what you wrote is correct i think one second yeah voltage sir, 1.3 and that's 1.2 so rg2 has to be 22 mega ohms right because this is 1.2 volts right 2.5 minus 1.3 so if i know rg2 is 22 then i can calculate rg1 right and i can calculate what is the current flowing through rg1 right so you can calculate from here you'll get rg1 to be 20.34 mega ohm and you'll get the current flowing through to be roughly 59 nanoamps that is the small current biasing current that's flowing through rg1 rg2 so once I I know that so the total current flowing through rd is given by what 1 milliamp plus 59 nanoamps which is approximately 1 milliamp right and so from that so this is approximately 1 milliamp right so what i know is now 5 volts and 2.5 volts therefore rd should be nothing but 2.5 kilo ohms right because it's roughly 1 milliamp flowing through 2.5 kilo ohms will give you a 2.5 volt drop across rd and so that's how I will set up the circuit. Are you following the question and how to go about doing it? So I solved one with you. I'm not going to solve all questions with you. Let's. Why don't you guys attempt the next circuit? So the NMOS transistor in the circuit below has a VT of 0.7 and an early voltage of 50 volts. Right. So I've given the early voltage means channel length modulation is important. Now the first part is neglecting early effect. Verify that the MOSFET is in saturation with an ID of half a millivolt, half a milliamp and an overdrive voltage of 0.3 volts. What must the MOSFET KN be? That is mu n c of W by L. And what is the DC voltage at the drain? Second thing is find Rn. And the third question is about the sinusoid so the first question is here what kind of amplifier do you think what kind of amplifier do you see here the common source common source. why is that you know the input is of the gate and the output is pulled at the drill. good right so this is a common source amplifier so the first question is can one of you do the first part so this is your m1 your M1 is here. Now, when you're doing DC analysis, what happens to the capacitors? So they're, open. As open circuits. they're all open circuits, right? So remember, they're all open circuits. So your effective circuit essentially reduces to only this circuit. Right? So given these um, numbers, can you find out? Okay, another thing I maybe forgot to write here. VDD is, oh, it's written here. VDD is 5 volts. So can somebody first confirm if the MOSFET is in saturation? What is the current flowing through the 5 kilo ohm resistor and the 2 kilo ohm resistor? What is the current flowing through these two resistors? 0.5 milliamp. 0.5 milliamp, right? So if you know the current flowing through resistors, what can you calculate? You can calculate voltage drops, right? So if you know the voltage drops, now, now, now go and tell me how do you confirm if M1 is in saturation or not? Uh, so since we know the voltage at uh, the gate, like we know that five, it's 5 volt distributed across the 300 ohm resistor, so the kilo ohm resistor, we can find the gate voltage. And since we know the current in going to the MOSFET itself, we can find the drain voltage. Sure. 
No, but you you don't need to worry about this part for now, right? Very simply, how can you just so VOV is given to you, right? Overdrive is given to be 0.3 volts. So if overdrive is given to be 0.3 volts, what is VGS? Sir, uh, we get VGS as uh, three volts. So one. Yeah. 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 One volt, right? Yes, sir. One Forget volt, about yes. the circuit. Just tell me what happens here. It's one volt, right? Right, VGS is one volt. That is the voltage from this point to this point is one volt. Right. Now, how do you confirm if the transistor is in saturation or not? So you find the voltage drop across the five kilo ohms. Ah, so what is... is VDS of the transistor? So is it VDD minus ID? Mm. Ah, so what is VDS? Huh? five volt point... minus. 0.25. Ah, how 0.25? So I think it's 1.5. Very good. So 5 yeah. kilo ohm time times 0.5 milli so minus 3, 2 kilo ohm times 0.5 milli, right? There is 0.5 milli flowing through 5 and 2 kilo ohm, right? So if you look at it, 7 kilo ohms. 0.5 milli flowing through it means this voltage here is 2.5 volts. This voltage here is 1 volt. So 5 minus 3.5 is 1.5 volts. So I have VDS is 1.5 volts and VG minus VTS 0.3 volts. So is the transistor in saturation or not? It is. Right? Because VDS is greater than VGS minus VT. Right? Hence in saturation. So now can... Can you calculate what the MOSFET KN needs to be? If it has to support this current at this overdrive voltage, what should the KN be? What is KN? So since we know VOV and we know ID, we can yeah. just add KN. Yeah, so what is KN? Somebody calculate and tell me. So 1.11. Again, check 1.11 watt units. So it's 1 upon 90. 1.1 upon... milliamp. Uh, ah, okay, let's quickly do it. 2 ID by VOV square. Guys, after ED, this should not be difficult. 1 by 0.3 the whole squared, right? Milliamp per volt squared. 1 by 0.3 is 0.09. 1 by 0.09 is roughly 100 by 9, which is 11.11 milliamp per volt squared. What is the DC value voltage at the drain? What is the value here at VD? So 2.5 volts. Very good, right? We just calculated. It's 5 minus the voltage drop across the 5 kilo ohm resistor. So you guys see right here, even though the voltage here is going to be 2 volts, 1 volt is falling across VGS and 1 volt is falling across the TO2 kilo ohm resistor. I hope you understand. That's why this is 200. So this node is at 2 volts. VGS is 1 volt and 1 volt is dropping across the 2 kilo ohm resistor. So now for this amplifier, if I ask you to find RN, what is RN? One twenty plus three hundred kilo ohm parallel with two hundred. Is it one twenty plus two hundred? When I say it's a uh, one twenty, uh, it is one twenty plus three hundred parallel two hundred. No, no. Right? When I say RN, right? What does when I connect a coupling capacitor here it means this is my signal source, and the rest of this is my amplifier, right? Remember, okay. this is your coupling capacitor. So, what does RN of the amplifier? Three hundred parallel two hundred. Three hundred parallel two hundred, right? which is 120 kilo ohm. Okay. So now let's do the next part. Now that's the interesting question. So assume that this V signal is a sinusoid. 
with some peak amplitude of V signal cap. What is the maximum allowable value of V signal cap for which the transistor remains in saturation? What is the corresponding amplitude of the output voltage? So how would you go about solving that? That is, I want to know what is the maximum allowable voltage I can apply at the input such that M1 remains in saturation. So isn't this an extension to the previous question? Yeah, so solve it for me and tell me. And sir, I just have it out. How did you get uh, two volts at the node or uh, at the gate? Five volt divide across a 500 kilo ohm resistor, right? Okay. So it's two fifth and three fifth. So can somebody come up and tell me what is the maximum signal amplitude I can allow? I'll give you a couple of minutes. So is it 0.3 volts? 0.3 volts. Yes, sir. that is the maximum signal amplitude. I get slightly less, but it's at least it's close enough. I got 295 millivolts. You got 300, right? Yes, sir. I may have done some calculations. That's fine. Okay. So, how do you go about doing that? So, Tanmay, can you quickly, Tanay, can you quickly uh, talk to as to how did you do it? Uh, sir, uh, I, sir, I thought that uh, v, VGS is uh, one volt, hmm. and for uh, for uh, it to be in saturation, VGS minus VT should be uh, like VGS should be greater than VT. Hmm. So, I thought that one minus point three will give us point seven volts. Okay. No, no, no. That is not correct. So I think you have to take VG max as 2.5 because VDS is 1.5. Okay, let's let's uh, think about this. First of all, when I apply a signal amplitude here, what is this going to function as? This is going to be a amplifier, right? So if this is an amplifier. What does this mean? So if the signal, if I have a sinusoidal signal here, right? What is going to happen at the drain voltage here? I'm going to see a sinusoid, right? And how are these two sinusoids related to each other? So minus GMRD. Is it minus GMRD or is it something else? Can somebody calculate the gain from V signal to V out? What is the gain of this amplifier? Minus GMRD upon 1 plus GMRS because oh, we no, have no, a... Okay. Look at where the coupling capacitors are carefully. So at small signal, what happens to the coupling capacitors? So they're shorted. So which are all the shorted capacitors? CS is going to short, CC2 is going to short, CC1 is going to short, right? So what happens to, is it a source degenerated CS amplifier or is it just a CS amplifier? It's just a CS. It's just a CS amplifier, right? Because this two kilo ohm is going to get shorted. So what is the gain from this point to output? That one is minus GMRD. I have given VA, no? So, won't it be RD parallel to R? Ah, very good. And what is RD in this case? Uh, RD should be 5 kilo ohms. 5 kilo ohm. Is it 5 kilo ohm? 2.5 kilo ohms. It's 2.5, right? CC2 is going to be shorted. So, the what? net load register is going to be 5 parallel 5. Are you following? So from point, from the gate of the transistor to the drain of the transistor, the gain is going to be given by 
let's say v1 right so from v0 to v1 it is given by minus gm ro parallel rl prime where this rl prime is nothing but 5k parallel 5k how do i calculate r not and how do i calculate gm now so r not is va by id va so, by id good and how do i calculate gm uh, so you already know the drain current and the overall drive good so gm is right so you can calculate gm as 2 id by vov and you can calculate r out as va by id right so all these terms are known to you so you know the gain from v not to v1 so from v1 to v6 what is the gain so it's half it's uh, half right because this is 120 and this is 120 right the yeah. input resistance of the amplifier is 120 this cc1 is going to be a short so v6 to v1 is going to go 120 by 120 which is half right so which means that the v1 by v6 is essentially 0.5 So your total gain, and so 2 ID by VOV, this works out to 3.33 millisiemen. Your R not works out to 100 kilo ohms, right? And so this gain, V V0 to V1, works out to minus 8.122 volt per volt. That's half. So the total gain from V0 to V6 works out to half of 8.122, which is roughly. Minus four point zero six one volt per volt, right? So what is this telling? This is telling that from signal from V six to V D, I have a gain of approximately four volt per volt, right? Now that means that this now it goes to the, as Anand mentioned. This is the same problem as before. Now this V D is going to fluctuate up and down, right? As the AC signal comes in, so. when vd goes higher we don't have an issue because the transistor will remain in saturation right for the transistor to remain in saturation right what do we want we want that vds should always be greater than vgs minus vt or vds should always be greater than vov now so when this vd goes low even at that point we want this to be greater than vov right so which means for the transistor to remain in saturation for m1 to be in saturation we want to ensure that v capital d that is the total ac plus dc voltage is always greater than or equal to vov right and so what does this mean so if you think about the maximum voltage swing at the output right this is going to be vg minus vt so it's going to be 0.3 right so if you look at the maximum voltage swing from that you can calculate you want this voltage to be so this voltage at dc what is this voltage at dc equal to we just calculated right this is going to be 2.5 volts right and so this vds has to be greater than vov so at no point should this voltage fall below vov and what is this voltage this voltage is 1 volt here and half a volt here so this is 1.5 so the minimum voltage that vd should have is 1.5 minus 0.3, which is 1.2 volts. So from from that you can calculate what the maximum signal voltage is. Okay. So let's let me do one more problem. I am running out of time. So I have one doubt. Uh, co yeah. Let's come back to it later. Uh, let's let's solve one more problem. Uh, fine, fine, sure. Yeah. So could you just show the previous slides so I can note on my final answer? Thank you, sir. So let's do this. Uh, a circuit below has to be designed for a voltage drop of 200 millivolts across RS. Design the amplifier for a small signal input impedance of at least 30 kilo ohm with the smallest permissible W by L.
So what are what have you got to design? You have to design. You have to find out R1. You have to find out R2. You have to find out what the W by L minimum is, and you have to find out what the biasing conditions are. Once you know R1 and R2, you know the biasing conditions, right? So need to calculate R1, R2, and the size of the transistor. So since we know that voltage drop is 200 millivolt across RS, that gives us ID, right? Correct. Uh, right, because the same ID is flowing through the 500 ohm and the 100 ohm resistor. Just to clarify, you want us to do this for both the NMOS and the PMOS, right? Why? Why should where is the PMOS in this circuit? So then what is K dash P over here? That's okay. That's just given for a, a generic case. In this case, it's a PMOS, no? Typically, when I give you these values, I'll give it for a technology. So it will have K and P, K, K prime N, K prime P, everything. Lambda N, Lambda P, VT, P, VT N. That's a technology file. Now your circuit doesn't require a PMOS, so you don't need to look at the PMOS parameters. Anybody with the smallest transistor size? Um, so one thing I understand in the notation was that hmm. here Kn prime is it includes like is it mu and C ox no. W by L or is no, it just no. mu and C ox? Kn is mu and C ox W by L. Kn prime is mu and C ox. Oh, okay, okay, right. Remember that. Since we are going for the smallest possible W by L, do we equate VDS and VOV? Yes, that would be the logic, right? Because if you want the smallest size, means you want the largest gate voltage, right? Is it 8.264? What is that? W by L. Mm, 
I got a different number. So is it seven point eight one two five? Okay, I got different numbers. Let's see. Okay, let's see if I got it right. So IDRS is given to be two hundred millivolts, right? So which means that RS is given to be hundred ohms. Implies that what is ID? ID is given to be two hundred milli by hundred, right? Which is two milliamp. So the bias current of M1 is going to be 2 milliamp, right? So if this is 2 milliamp is flowing through M1, it means that the voltage across this resistor is 1 volt, right? So if you look at VDS of the transistor, VDS of M1 is given by 1.8 minus 1 volt across the 500 ohm resistor minus 0.2 volt across the 100 ohm resistor. So this is 0.6 volts. Right? Now, I want the smallest transistor, right? So remember that for a smallest transistor means that I want, so if I want the smallest transistor, I need to ensure that I can bias it at the highest voltage possible, right? So to maintain VGS M1 in saturation, I have VDS should be greater than VGS minus VT, right? Or in other words, my VGS is going to be less than VDS plus VT, right? And VDS is 0.6, VT is 0.4, so VGS is less than 1 volt, right? So my VGS has to be less than 1 volt, which means that to design the smallest transistor, that is the maximum VGS can be 1 volt. So to design the smallest transistor, I will choose VGS to be 1 volt, maximum VGS to get the smallest transistor, right? And so what do I have? I, I have IDS is given by half of Kn prime W by L minimum times VGS maximum minus Vt, right? The whole swim. That is to get the smallest size transistor, I need to I need to use the largest gate voltage, right? And this VGS minus VT is nothing but 0 0.6. So what I get is that W by L minimum is what did I have? Two into two milliamp divided by Kn prime. Kn prime is 200 micro, which is 0 0.2 milli, right? Vg minus Vt is 0 0.6, so this is 0 0.6 the whole squared, right? So milli milli cancel, this is one, this. So this, in my, when I calculated, this works out to 55.55, or roughly yes, I'm getting the same 56. Thing. Yeah, so then my W by L minimum has to be 56 approximately, right? So that is my smallest transistor size. And then I need to calculate the smallest input impedance. So I know that input impedance is nothing but R1 parallel R2, right? So I know that R, sorry, R1 parallel R2 or R1 R2 by R1 plus R2 should be equal to 30 kilo ohm. But I also know that VG, if you look at this voltage VG, VG is going to be nothing but VGS plus the voltage across this, right? So VG has to be 1.2 volts. I know that VG has to be 1.2, right? Because it's VGS plus V drop across RS, right? And so, so I have two conditions. I have VG or that is I have R2 by R1 plus R2 is nothing but 1.2 by 1.8, right? So 1.2 volts has to be drop across R2. So that essentially gives you R1 as 45 and R2 as 90. So that's going to be a design. R1 is 45, R2 is 90, and your size of the transistor is 56. So can you go okay. to the next slide?